Yeah, I think this is the first question where um, there's potentially more work involved. And uh, just as a full disclosure, it is possible to do this uh, more easily, simply than I'm doing right now, especially if you have access to the textbook. The hint actually tells you all that. Uh, it tells you to review section 15.3. And it says, uh, and uh, note <laughs> that this problem contains no inductor. So you can set the reactance of inductor to be equal to zero. So wherever, so in this uh, section where you actually do have inductor, you can imagine replacing that with a wire and have no inductance there. Uh, which means uh, for every one of these questions, magnitude of impedance, the amplitude of the current through the register, and the phase difference volt between voltage and current. That's all worked out in the question, so, um, or in this uh, section. So they are giving you the, um, where are they giving you the magnitude of impedance? Um, ah, so uh, this is the magnitude of impedance or that's the magnitude of impedance. And in this expression, um, they are giving you the amplitude of the current oscillation, and they also work out the phase effector there. So, so sharp, just all in the textbook. So, so you know, if um, with access to textbook, this question can be done that simply, just looking up the formulas. I'm not trying to be difficult here. Um, but since I, um, took the trouble to introduce complex impedance. Let me do this question from scratch using complex impedance and uh, along the way show how, um, how non-scary uh, AC circuit analysis can be when you use the right tools, I hope. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, and this analysis will actually be simpler than textbook since in the textbook version, you have inductor and then you are getting rid of it. Here, I can simply have a circuit where there's no inductor to start out with. All I have is I have an AC generator. So some voltage source um, that's producing some voltage and it's uh, connected and a capacitor um, and I'll be given the resistance and the capacitance. So this is a, a, a series of circuit. So when it's uh, asking me for the magnitude of impedance, for the equivalent impedance of the circuit, I simply add the elements in series. So I need the impedance of the register plus the impedance of the capacitor. Um, the, so let me plug in the expressions for that, the register, it's the same thing. For the capacitor, it's, uh, so this is the one thing you need to have memorized, that the impedance of capacitor is one over I omega C. Um, yeah, I guess I can leave it here, that's fine. And um, now if you simply plug in these numbers into here in the calculator, you're gonna get uh, some complex number and that's not what you should plug in here. It is asking for the magnitude. So I should uh, calculate the magnitude of um, the equivalent impedance. So the magnitude of equivalent impedance, I think I do explain this in the lecture. Um, this notation with the complex numbers, it's a very, um, it has a special meaning. So with the real numbers, you simply make negative or positive. Uh, with the complex numbers, it's a little bit more complicated because it's not positive and negative. It's got imaginary parts and all that. So what this notation means is that you multiply the complex number, or I guess you, you are kind of taking a kind of square of complex number, but you multiply itself to its complex conjugate. Uh, complex conjugate is where you take the imaginary part i into minus i. And then uh, this result will give you, it's guaranteed to give you a positive uh, real number. Uh, when you start out the complex number, this operation should always give you a positive real number. So when you have the positive real number, take the square root of it, that'll give you this magnitude of the, the equivalent uh, impedance. So let me go through this calculation. 
Um, so the complex conjugate here is R minus, or I mean, you know, it's R plus one over minus I omega C. So it's R minus one over I omega C times the number itself, R plus one over I omega C. Uh, and I need to eventually take the square root. And when you look at, when you go through this uh, multiple equation, this is what you're going to find. R times R will be uh, preserved. You will have that. But all the cross terms, um, the one over I, minus one over I omega C times R and R times uh, one over I omega C, those two are gonna cancel out because they only differ by this sign here. So I'm not even gonna write them down. It's gonna cancel out. The only term that, the only other term that survives is this term, um, minus one over i omega c times one, one over i omega c. So i squared gives you minus one, that cancels the minus. So you end up with a plus one over omega squared c squared. Uh, oh, and I need to take the square root. So that's my equivalent impedance. If you, plug in all, all the numbers that are given. Here, you're conveniently given omega in radians per second. You don't have to convert frequency to radians per second. And when you plug in all the numbers, you should get a number and that number should be in uh, in unit of ohm. Uh, you know, make sure you take care of the metric prefixes. So, so that should be the magnitude of the impedance. And the amplitude of the current through the register is, well, we are given um, the amplitude of the voltage and the relationship between current and voltage is given by Ohm's law. So the current is given by voltage divided by something that behaves like, um, behaves like resistance, which is impedance, or in this case, the equivalent impedance. And um, this entire expression technically is all complex. And the complex portion of the equivalent red, uh, impedance actually gives you the phase shift and all that. But for the purpose of getting answer to B, you can imagine that you are taking absolute value of everything. And when you do, this is kind of what you end up with. The absolute value of the current, uh, which at um, yeah, ab absolute value of current is equal to, um, and technically I should actually stop saying it's a function of time. Because uh, when you do that absolute value operation with this time dependent thing, um, it will actually, the time dependent phase factor, the e to the i omega t will cancel out. So absolute value of current, which is gonna end up being the magnitude of, uh, amplitude of the current oscillation uh, is equal to absolute value of voltage divided by absolute value of the equivalent resistance. We worked this out here. So, and the absolute value of the voltage is gonna be the amplitude of voltage. So the amplitude of current is simply V naught that I have there divided by um, this quantity here, square root of R squared plus one over omega squared C squared. Plug in the numbers, that should be it. And uh, it'll give you answer in amperes and make sure to convert to milliamperes. Um, the part C is the part that, um, that I want you to <laughs> go over. Um, and uh, oh, it says take the positive phase difference to mean that voltage is leading the current by this phase difference. Oh, there's a good chance I'll make a sign error for that part. But let me uh, give that a try. So, okay, so I actually have to redo this calculation because to the part to be, I did this one a little bit sloppily and try to you know ignore the imaginary parts, just did the absolute value thing. But once I'm interested in the phase difference, then I need to preserve all that uh, phase information. So um, yeah, so this is how it's gonna look. Um, yeah, so uh, I need to write my voltage, the complex voltage function as V naught e to the i omega t and my current 
is going to look like it will have amplitude of oscillation times e to the um, i and then there's a time dependent portion and there will be some kind of a phase difference and let me see if i can try to write this right take the positive phase difference to mean voltage is leading the current so voltage is leading then i think i want this to be minus v um, so that let's say time t equals zero uh, voltage is at some value and the uh, current is at some value that would be uh, an earlier time of t oh no so i want this to be a plus v so that uh, current t will have to be some later value to be at the same phase as yeah i, I think if I made a sign error, I'll fix it <laughs> as I plug in the answer. So I need to write down the Ohm's law expression, which says that voltage um, is given by the impedance, uh, this time the full expression, the whole complex quantity, impedance times the current. So um, what I have is V naught, e to the i omega t is equal to, and uh, and this is my full expression for um, impedance. Um, actually, uh, let me do this rewrite. Um, so this is my full expression, but I can imagine that this can be written in this form. The magnitude of the impedance times e to the I phi. So this complex number in the complex plane, it can be represented this way. It's got real part that's uh, that's R, and it's got imaginary part that goes in the negative direction in the length of one over omega c. So let's see. So R one over omega c, and this uh, uh, complex number here can be represented as this kind of a vector in an, a complex plane with the real part on the horizontal and imaginary part on the vertical axis. And so this is uh, written in a kind of Cartesian format with the X and Y components specified. And what I'm doing here is a rewrite into a polar coordinate where I have uh, the magnitude as the well, magnitude of this vector. And I need to express this phi angle phi. I can either express it as this angle here or probably better uh, as this angle here phi. Then you can uh, see from here what the expression for the phi is. Uh, phi is equal to the arc tangent of, assuming it's between minus 90 and 90, uh, imaginary portion of G divided by the real portion of G. Because uh, imaginary portion is the this uh, uh, Y component, the real part is this X component, so opposite over adjacent, that's tangent of phi, so arc tangent gets your phi. So I, I think I'm almost done here and Oh, so we did this expression here. Ohm's law gives us this, um, the, um, the absolute value G equivalent E to the I phi um, times the current um, amplitude times uh, E to the, oh, did I use phi twice? Uh, let me just uh, make this data so that I don't overload my variables. Um, e to the i omega t plus theta. And this is where I hope, uh, um, this is where some comparison of parts helps, helps you do the analysis more quickly. So let me highlight the parts that I want to compare. So, uh, this e to the i omega t, that's the only time dependent part. So this portion better equal this portion, e to the i omega t, so that they uh, cancel each other out. Once uh, you've 
um, match the those two parts together, then what you have remaining is this. This V naught, a real number, the amplitude of voltage, must equal this entire combination. The uh, equivalent of, uh, red impedance uh, times the phase factor times the current times e to the i theta. And since the left hand side gives you a real number, right hand side should also give you a real number, which means the only choice you have is e to the i phi plus theta to be equal to one, or uh, this combination here should equal to zero. So, um, so I, I'm doing this to justify how the phi I expressed here is related to the phase factor that appears in the current information. So my so this quantity should be equal minus theta, or theta should be equal to minus that. Um, so so let me actually work this out because uh, so you know in terms of the the magnitude of the answer here, it should be simply um, arc ten of the imaginary component, which is this one over omega c divided by the real component, which will be the resistance. And um, the part that's uh, getting me confused a little bit here is if it's minus or plus. I want to say it should be negative, but um, I'll only give you 50-50 for that right. Um, so let me first do the architangent calculation so that I have a number to plug in. So I need one over omega c, uh, 120 uh, times pi. Oops, uh, I didn't want to do it that way. One divided by um, 120 um, pi omega. So that's that omega. And I need C for microfarad, uh, for microfarad, it's one over omega C, uh, divided by the resistance, uh, which was a 650 ohm. So that's the ratio inside arc tangent. And let me take the arc tangent. Trigonometry. Oh, arc tangent. So I hope I'm in degree mode. Oh, or, or uh, wait, that's in. Can I undo? I might not be able to undo. Yeah, it's fine. Um, <sighs> Let me put this in radian mode and. Um, 120 pi omega c uh, for microfarad uh, divided by the resistance 650 and take the so it's going to give me an answer in radian arc tangent um, and uh, I think it's minus so the so with the inductors, <laughs> sorry, this phrase leading, lagging, I always get them mixed up. And uh, if I rely on my math here, I should have a minus sign. So let me first try with a minus sign. So minus 0 0.795, minus 0 0.795. And if, uh, I, I guess that's right. <laughs> yeah, let me just try positive to make sure that that's wrong. Um, yeah. Wait, was there? Oh, yeah. Not there. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so that's how you uh, do question like this. If we use complex impedance, really all you have to remember are the expressions for the impedance, and the rest of the calculation kind of goes like a regular circuit analysis. The only part that is potentially challenging is the part involving phase difference. That's where you have to be more facile with, um, I think that's the right word. I'll look it up later what facile means. I think it means having facility or 
computers with <laughs> uh, complex numbers. And uh, demonstrating that is what I want you to do uh, at this session. So let me look at the next question. I think next question might be similar. Um, yeah, so this is a similar question, but this time it's register and inductor. So here the question tells me, uh, register and inductor are connected in series across an AC generator. So I have an AC voltage source that's connected to a register of given resistance and an inductor of given inductance. So it, the first question asks for the magnitude of the impedance. So I need to calculate the equivalent impedance and the expression for the equivalent impedance is like you are adding registers in series. It's the impedance of the register, R, plus the impedance of the inductor, um, which is I omega L. Um, but you know that's not the answer they are looking for. They want to want me to give them the magnitude of this complex impedance. So I need to calculate the magnitude of the complex impedance, which again, it, this is a shorthand for really this operation, the complex conjugate times the complex number itself, and then take the square root. So um, square root of it's gonna be R minus I omega L times R plus I omega L. And when you, expand this out, all the cross terms disappear. And what you will end up with is R squared. And uh, this term times that minus I times I gives me plus omega and then omega squared L squared, square root. Of. So that's the magnitude of impedance, square root of R squared plus omega L squared, omega squared L squared. And the question gives you all the numbers you need. The amplitude of current through the register, it's the same deal. You have the amplitude for the voltage. So the amplitude for the current will simply be given by that voltage amplitude divided by the equivalent impedance. Uh, I think that's where these magnitude quantities are kind of useful, where if you're comparing the amplitude of oscillating current with the amplitude of voltage, then you don't care about the phase factors. That's where these absolute value quantities are useful. So um, now where it's asking for phase difference, let me just uh, um, rewrite the, the same expression I did in a, a similar previous question, which is uh, I hold this Ohm's law expression that um, the voltage as a complex function is equal to the current as a complex function times the, um, the impedance as a complex quantity. Then um, my voltage is expressed as the amplitude times e to the i omega t, and my current is, ex um, or let me leave my current as, um, well, yeah, no, let me just write it out. My current will be re re expressed as amplitude times e to the i omega t and uh, possibly a little bit of phase factor. And uh, possibly, so I, I think this should be minus theta. So that's what I did before, right? That's the sign that I always tend to get wrong. So no, I did a plus there. Um, It's a confusing convention. I, I'm just gonna get it half the time right, half the time wrong. <laughs> so, so you know, when I get it wrong, I just fix it. <laughs> so the current times the the equivalent impedance, which is this quantity here. But I'm gonna take the time to rewrite it into this form: the absolute value of the impedance, that's this, times the phase vector e to the i phi. The, the complex phase vector. And, um, and let me, collecting all the like terms, um, this is equal to uh, I naught times absolute value of G equal, or not like terms really, 
collecting terms that kind of have meaning together. Um, so this is the thing that I used to, to get answer to part B, that this is equal to V naught, and I have the E to the I omega T, that's the oscillating time dependent portion, and I have E to the I theta uh, plus V, E to the I theta plus V. And since this has no matching part on the left-hand side, this must be equal to one or theta plus V is equal to zero. So my theta should be equal to minus V or um, V being the complex phase vector of this complex number. The expression for V is uh, arctangent I'm just carrying the minus sign over, by the way. Architangent of the imaginary part, omega L, divided by the real part, R. So, so that should be it. That should give me theta. And why is it negative twice? Hmm. In the previous question, I might have made two errors that kind of just canceled each other out. Um, yeah, so in the previous part, I made a mistake here, sorry. I made two sign errors that just canceled each other out. So when I did the imaginary part, the imaginary part was negative. So this should be negative, um, which means the sign I had here was wrong. I don't know. Um, it, so for this question, <laughs> my uh, phase difference is gonna be the opposite sign of the other one. So here it's just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna get a, some kind of positive number. And the, the magnitude of the positive value will be architangent of omega L over R. Yeah, so getting the sign right, it's, it's not something that I'm gonna ask you to do. And it's something that I myself, unless I, take time to think it through it very careful each time that I will get it wrong. Maybe half the time, maybe a quarter of the time on a good day. So, uh, so that's omega times L, I'm just giving it in Henry. So plug in Henry divided by 300. Okay, and let me in radians, take the arc tangent of that. Um, so 1.413 radians. Let me plug that in, make sure I get the correct answer. Uh, 1.413, 1.413, and it's correct. <laughs> and it's, uh, seriously, this is why intuition matters because um, there are places where um, it's uh, really easy to make um, mistakes, uh, like a sign error, <laughs> even with experience, those are sometimes uh, can be very tricky. And uh, when you have uh, intuition for certain things, then, then you know when, you are, when your answer is wrong so that you can correct it. Here, the intuition that I had that I could rely on was even if I could always get this mixed up about phase difference um, of what's leading and what's lagging. What I do remember is that whatever the order is, the order for inductor is the opposite of the order for capacitor. So if I got one answer right for capacitor, then the correct answer for the other one should be the other side. So, uh, so that's my extent of intuition for getting the phase difference assigned right. 